My name is Lauren McClellan. I'm with Amata Weld Tech. Today we're going to talk about the MM410 portable weld monitor or weld checkers. Weld checkers or weld monitors have been around for many, many years. Typically used to measure current and voltage, power, resistance, and time. Recent technologies have allowed us to include uh, force and displacement with the MM410 or any weld checker. Displacement is the collapse of the material during welding, so we can associate now the mechanical aspects of force and displacement with our electrical, which is the voltage and the current. Now the MM410 and weld checkers are the health monitor of your system. They'll tell you if your system is running nice and lean, there's no problems, and it'll also tell you when things start to drift. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at just the basics, looking at voltage and current, and we'll show you how to monitor that. So stay tuned and, and we'll dig right in. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to measure current and voltage and time with the MM410. Now, why do we want to measure current and voltage? Why, why do we care what's coming out of this machine? Well, first we want to know, is, is the current that we program in the control actually coming through the parts, actually being delivered, the, the energy being delivered to the parts? You don't know unless you have some way of telling, like a monitor. So, to measure current, we want to verify that that current is, a, is the same as what you've programmed in the control. Now, in constant current mode, current will remain the same, and your variable will be your, your voltage. It will vary with the resistance of the part. So we monitor voltage to monitor changes in part plating, part thicknesses, or electrode uh, wear and contamination on the electrodes. So let's just show you real quick how to connect uh, the toroidal coil and voltage clips. Now the throttle coil, this is a big 800 millimeter coil. We have smaller ones, about this range for 400. And we just take this and wrap it around any part of the secondary bus. Current is the same in a series circuit. So we just wrap it around the weld cables here. You can see that. And then we take our voltage clips. And typically the voltage clips are uh, mounted right across the, the workpiece. So we're just going to clip them here and here. That'll measure my voltage drop right across the electrodes and the part where we want to see it. Okay? So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to make a weld and then we'll take a look at what comes out on the monitor here. Okay, we have a successful weld. Let's take a look at the monitor. Okay, so we made a weld um, to look at our current and our voltage. And you see the top line here is our peak current at 3.76. We have a setting of 3,000 amps or 100 milliseconds. You can see our, vo our, our RMS current is 3,000 amps, 3,001. 3, the voltage drop across the workpiece is 1.4 volts with an average of 0.9. And our weld time is 100 milliseconds. Now we can also take a look at our waveform and fit to the screen. And here you can see our weld time uh, is the uh, 100 milliseconds, with the yellow being our current waveform and our voltage waveform. So you can see that uh, this system is running exactly as we have programmed and what we'd expect. Okay, so we took measurements with the voltage clips across the electrodes, and again, that's monitoring what happens right here at the business end, right across the parts, which will tell us if the plating has changed, if the thickness of parts have changed, any, any time that the resistance has changed at that interface. We can also take a look at the, the health of the entire machine by placing the uh, voltage clips at the back of the, elect of the uh, transformer here. So we'll just move these all the way back to the transformer. What that's going to do is it's going to measure the entire loop of this secondary. It's going to measure all the voltage drops combined, including the cables, the bus, and the, and the part. And what this will do will tell us uh, if, if our system is running well, our voltage will be at a certain level. If it starts to uh, age or it gets contamination build up between the cables and connections, that voltage will start to rise. So you can monitor the health of your system by doing it this way. So let's go ahead and make a a well here with the cables at the back and see what the difference is here. Okay, so 
Okay, let's take a look at that. Okay, so we moved the voltage clips from across the electrodes back to the transformer to measure the, the health of the complete system, including the weld cables, uh, the weld head bus, flexures, and across the part. And if you remember that we had 0.9 uh, volts RMS previously, now we have 1.6. This is telling us we dropped about 0.7 volts across that secondary, which is very good. If you had a secondary that was declining, you would see these voltages uh, go up quite a bit. And it'll get to the point where these voltages may be 6, 7, 8 volts, and you'll start to notice that your current isn't getting where it's supposed to be either because your, your control is running out of voltage and can't supply the current. So it's a very effective way of checking uh, the health of the entire system by using the MM410. Uh, troubleshooting it back at the uh, at the transformer to see the entire system. We took a look at voltage across our electrodes um, to look at the voltage drop across our parts. We moved it back to the transformer to monitor the health of the complete system. Now we're going to take a look at force and in particular force timing. Uh, force timing is that time in which we look at the force to see when we fire. And what we're going to use for that is we're not going to use our, our typical toroidal coil or voltage leads. We're going to use the MA771 weld through sensor. Now we're actually going to pass current right through the device and monitor the current and the force in relation to time. So we're just going to stick it in here inside the electrodes. We're going to make a weld. And we're going to pair, we're going to take a look at when that current fires in relation to the, the force of the weld head. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so we just made a weld using our MA771 weld through sensor. And what we're looking at here is the cyan or blue waveform is your force waveform. The yellow is the current waveform. And as you can see by this graph, that we fired the welder here while our force was still ramping up. Now this isn't where you want it to have. You want it to be firing when this force had leveled off and settled. What this could cause is expulsion, uh, inconsistent welds, or blowouts um, of, the, of the weldment. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add some time to our delay, our squeeze time. And we'll do another weld and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, we're back. And what we saw with the force timing on the previous weld is that we were firing too early. Too early um, means that the force did not settle. We're still we're firing at the uh, up ramp of the, of the force. And what that can cause, that could cause uh, inconsistencies in your welds. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some more time to the, uh, to the weld. And we've already adjusted the, the weld control. We've added a little bit of time. Go through and make another weld here. Okay, you notice it took a little bit longer for that weld to occur. Let's see what the uh, timing looks like now. Okay, so we made another weld using the weld through sensor. And again, the blue graph is our force and the yellow is our current. As you can see now, we have plenty of time for that force to settle down before we fired the current so we know that we're in a stable uh, environment for, uh, for the weld to occur. And this is where you want to be. Again, uh, this happens quite a bit at customers' uh, facilities. We see this problem a lot where they're firing too soon and there's absolutely no way for them to know uh, unless you have uh, something like the MA771 and the uh, MM410 weld monitor. Okay, to wrap it up, uh, let's do a summary of what we did here. So we introduced the MM410 we took current measurements, we took the voltage measurements here at the electrodes and back at the transformer to show the health of the, of the system. We measured our force and force timing and we, we saw that we were firing a little bit too early and made that correction. Now with the MM410, it's a portable unit. Uh, so you can take this unit from this system to any other system you have in your plant and do spot checks on the health of all those systems in your plant. So, Catching any of your, your systems not running correctly or forces not um, firing at the, at the right time is invaluable. It'll pay for itself in no time. Now, we also have monitors that monitor every single weld, like the MM400. It's a standalone desktop monitor, and it is at a single station with a single piece of equipment, and it monitors every single weld. It monitors the current, voltage, force, displacement, and you can set limits around those parameters and it will alarm you that one of those parameters has gone out of, 
out of the set limits. Uh, and this will keep a defective part from getting to the customer, which we all want to uh, not have uh, happen. It's a catastrophe if something like that happens. So as you see, the MM410 and MM400 are invaluable to monitor the health of your systems.